So you've been playing a lot of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Maybe you're still on your first playthrough, maybe you're starting a new game plus, or maybe you're already best friends with all three house leaders. No matter what, if you're a bit further into the game and looking for some in-depth tips, we've got you covered. There are some minor spoilers ahead, so if you aren't at least a few months in yet, check out our other tips videos first. Depending on which house you picked, there are certain people you might want to recruit or not pay attention to. If you're in the Black Eagles and will follow Edelgard to the ends of the earth, don't bother with Flane, Sedith, Catherine, or Cyril. Any house can benefit from Felix, who is just really, really strong. Dorothea's Meteor and Marianne's Silence ability are both very useful too, and Ash's permanent lockpick ability comes in handy if you don't have any thieves or assassins on your team. Finally, Ingrid is one of the few students built to be a Pegasus Knight, and she's also a delight to have around. Pro tip, if you reach B support with someone outside your class, recruiting them is a breeze. In month 12, you'll have the opportunity to enter one of your students in the White Heron Cup where they can unlock the exclusive Dancer class. Dancers can be clutch support units. They can dance for an adjacent unit to give them a second turn, and are good with sword, authority, and magic. Strong options are Dorothea, Lysithia, and Marianne for their skill strengths, or Flane if you're not in the Black Eagles since she's all support already. Keep in mind that your dancer needs at least 13 charm to win, and you can tutor them in dancing ahead of time using an activity point to increase their charm by 5. Raising support levels with your students, as well as other students and faculty, is one of the most important aspects of Three Houses. Not only do characters become more effective on the battlefield, but you can also learn more about their backstory and personality. But don't try too hard to max out support levels right away. You won't be able to reach A support with anyone, or between anyone else, until after the time skip happens. In New Game Plus, you can spend Renown to unlock things like skill levels, support levels, and professor level. You can also unlock class abilities with Renown, and this is something you should pay attention to before you start a New Game Plus. When a unit reaches class mastery with a certain class by battling a bunch, you'll get a special ability to equip. If you have that same unit in your party in a New Game Plus save, you can skip the time you'd spend leveling up that class and get the ability right away. Some of the class abilities are pretty useful, so taking the time to make sure your favorite units are reaching class mastery in their best classes will be super helpful in later playthroughs. Try your best to break all four yellow squares under a monster before killing it. This will stun it for a full turn, and you'll get a piece of rare ore that's important in forging powerful weapons from rusted ones. For example, breaking a big bird's shields will get you Mithril, a material needed to forge rare named weapons you might find on the battlefield. Combat arts like an axe user's monster breaker or a lance user's monster piercer can break a portion of the shield in one hit, and gambits are a good way to damage multiple squares at once. You might be wondering what exactly it takes for a unit to attack twice. It all has to do with the speed stat. If a unit's speed is four or more points greater than your opponent's, you'll automatically attack twice in one go. And depending on the weapon, you might even be able to attack four times in one combat encounter. There are quite a few weapons to choose from in Fire Emblem, and some are designed to deal with specific units. The Armor Slayer is a sword designed to dispatch armored units, the Horse Slayer Lance is good against, you guessed it, cavalry units, the Mace works wonders on armored units, and the Mini Bow can be used at close range. Almost every weapon type also has Brave and Killer variations. The Brave weapons allow the user to attack twice, or maybe more if their speed is high enough, and the Killer weapons have an increased critical hit rate. I find that these specialized weapons are a good backup weapon to complement your standard sword or axe. For some reason, enemies love to prioritize your lower defense units such as archers and mages. The obvious solution and often the best one is to lead with your tankier units and keep your weaker ranged units behind you. However, high mobility units like Pegasus Knights can still cut through your units and flank your more vulnerable students. In these situations, you should be constantly checking your enemy's range with ZR, but I also recommend equipping your weaker units with auto-healing items such as the Prayer Ring or Goddess Ring, and trying to increase their defense and resistance stats with permanent stat boost items like the Fruit of Life. If one of your students is underleveled and you're afraid to bring them into battle directly, you could also attach them to other units as adjutants. This means they can earn XP while staying safe. 
It's pretty easy to overlook as the game never really tells you about it, but there's a character called Online Liaison that connects you with travelers online. Through these online travelers, you can buy items for a discounted price, do recon training, which is essentially a hide-and-seek game that nets you resources as a reward, and hire them as adjutants in battle with the potential of them teaching you an ability or combat art that they might have. You can also send one of your units out into the net to reap the rewards like gold and items. Those units can still be used in battle even when they're sent off to travel. The online liaison is hanging out near the Officer's Academy, but know that you need a Nintendo Switch online subscription to use online features. That about covers it for this round of tips. Let us know what other more in-depth tips you have for Fire Emblem Three Houses in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.